Okay, this is Japan turn two. Uh, Mr. Mister, the Japanese commander, has $41 to spend. He's going to spend $4 and advance his tech. He's going to spend $18 on six infantry, $18 on three tanks, and he'll have a dollar left over to spend for the next round. Uh, he will be declaring a series of attacks. Um, a lot of them are just walk-ins, but there, uh, there is one battle to be rolled. Uh, so we'll just talk about all the walk-ins first. Um, he is walking a single infantry from Siberia into the Soviet Far East. Uh, he is walking a single uh, infantry from Siberia into Saka. Uh, and he is walking two artillery from Siberia, six infantry from Korea, and one infantry from Manchuria into Amur, which will, of course, activate... Um, Manchuria for the Russians, although I think he's prepared for that. Um, so, uh, in terms of other attacks, there are three attacks in China, and two of them are walk-ins. He's going to walk one guy into Yunnan from Hunan, he's going to walk one guy into Kwai Chow from Hunan, uh, and he's going to walk, uh, I think it's five, one, two, five infantry, t three artillery, and one mech into Hopei from Anhui. Uh, the only actual attack that's going to be a roll of any kind is he is sending two infantry into Shahar uh, along with three fighters and three tactical bombers The tactical uh, from, uh, from Manchuria. The tactical bombers will be using their uh, target select, which I understand uh, is a rule that is slightly being altered in BBR 3.0, but we're still playing the older version, uh, so they can still target... Um, Infantry. Uh, he is going to be supporting that attack with a uh, couple of paratroopers from um, Japan. They're going to get on the uh, transport plane and go into Shahar and drop there. So there really is only one um, battle to roll. It's not going to be particularly exciting. It will probably be over before it starts, but I'll set that up on the board right now. In the battle for Shahar, um, there's two paratroopers dropping, there's two guys coming in from the land, and then there's three fighters and three tactical bombers. All three tactical bombers are going to use their target select, so this should be a really, really short battle. Put that there just in case. And it is. Two hits, they only need one, so the Chinese infantry does not get to defend, and the territory is taken with no Japanese casualties. Okay, Japanese non-combat. The uh, artillery from Manchuria is going to move into Zhihol. Uh, one fighter and one tactical bomber from the Shahar attack are going to land back in Manchuria, and the other two fighters and tack bombers are going to land in Zhihol. Um, the uh, strategic bomber that was designated a transport is going to move into Hunan. Uh, as are all of the forces from Guangxi. Two infantry, four, uh, two artillery, four infantry, uh, one tack, and three fighters. Um, in addition, there is some pretty serious naval movement and also plane movement here. Okay, on Japan, the um, fighter and tactical bomber are going to move to Hunan to join up with the rest of the forces that will be assembling there. Okay, the Second strategic bomber will be designated an air transport, pick up two infantry, and fly them to Siam and land there. So they'll end up right here. Uh, now in terms of the naval movement, um, the st all the stuff that was in C-Zone 5, the two uh, battleships, the cruiser, and the two transports are going to go to C-Zone 6. Um, one aircraft carrier is going to take off from C-Zone 6 and end up in C-Zone 36, um, just off the coast of French Indochina. Uh, and then a pretty significant chunk of this navy, one um, uh, fully loaded carrier, two transports, two uh, destroyers and two submarines uh, are going to go to C-Zone 33 down here. Okay, uh, the transports on the way are going to load up one tank from Japan and they're going to pick up the guy from Iwo Jima and they will end up in the Carolines um, with, uh, with a decent sized fleet there. 
Okay. All right. So, um, I think that's everything. I think that's, uh, where everything is supposed to be. Uh, so I'll tidy this board up and then we'll come back with placements and, uh, money. Okay, in terms of placements, the six infantry are going into Japan. The three tanks are going into Kyungsu. And let's uh, flip some uh, territory markers. Uh, for Russia, they lose the Soviet Far East, which in BBR is not worth anything. Uh, but they also lose a moor and Saka, which is $2 for the Japanese. So we will note that on here. Okay, Japan goes from 30 to 32. Russia goes from 35 to 33. But, wait, there's more. In China, um, they pick up a dollar for Yunnan, two dollars for Kwai Chow, a dollar for Hopei, and a dollar for... Oh, sorry. They already had, hold on, where the hell was I here? Oh, I think I screwed something up. There's supposed to be a guy there. Um, I don't know where the guy went. I think I might have put him away by accident. Okay, yeah, sorry, there's supposed to be an infantry there in Shahar. Okay, uh, I hope I got my count right then. I should, should be okay, there's five there. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, so, sorry, that's uh, one, two, three, four, five up from China and five or five up for Japan and five down for China. So they go to 32 to 37. China goes from 10 to five. Uh, and in terms of income, that means they have a base income of $37. They kept a dollar from last time and they're going to get a $10 national objective for not being at war with the Americans and not attacking French Indochina and not attacking uh, England or, uh, or the Anzacs. Uh, so that's the um, money situation. So 37, 30, $48 they're going to have to spend next turn. Okay, I'll come around the other side and we'll do our, um, our uh, disposition of forces. Okay, way up in the north. Okay, in the Soviet Far East, there is a single uh, Japanese infantry. In Saka, there is a single Japanese infantry. Now, I want to get my count correct this time because I screwed up some of the counts in the uh, U uh, USSR turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven infantry and two artillery in Amur, which, by the way, activated... Mongolia for the Russians, so all of those units are now Russian. Um, in Manchuria, there are two fighters and one tactical bomber, one infantry and one uh, anti-aircraft artillery. In Jehol, I'm going to zoom out a smidge here. In Jehol, there are two fighters and two tactical bombers along with an artillery. In Shahar, there is a single infantry. In Hopei, there are five infantry, three artillery, and one uh, mechanized infantry. In Kwai Chow, there is a single infantry. In Hunan, I think it's Hunan, isn't it? In Hunan, there are four infantry, two artillery, uh, one strategic bomber that is currently designated an air transport. Uh, and then we have a rather large number of fighters and bombers. There's two tactical bombers. And let me just make sure the count is correct here. One, two, three, four fighters. Okay. Uh, in Kyangsu, there are three tanks. And in Yunnan, there's a single infantry. All the way down in Siam... There are now four infantry and a tactical bomber that is currently designated as an air transport. In C-Zone 36, there's a fully loaded carrier with a fighter and a tactical bomber. In Paolao, there is an infantry 
in the Caroline Islands. There are three infantry, one tank and one anti-aircraft. In Sea Zone 33, there's a fully loaded carrier with a fighter and a tactical bomber. There are two transports, two subs, two uh, destroyers. Uh, moving up into the home waters, in um, Sea Zone 6, there are two transports, two battleships, two, uh, two cruisers, and two destroyers, along with a fully loaded carrier with a fighter and a tactical bomber. In Japan proper, there are now six infantry and three anti-aircraft artillery. Uh, I think that ends Japan's turn. So, the United States is up next. We'll see what it does with its forces. Um, yeah, U.S. and China up next. So, enjoy.